I'm going to start off by putting this project under git and before I do that I'm going to create a git ignore file into which I'm going to add my terraform tfrs file. Now on a real world project you'll want a different approach than this but for this project as a tutorial this method will suffice. With this file in place I'm going to do a git init on my directory structure. I'm going to check the outcome of a git status to ensure that my terraform tfrs file is not going to end up as a committed file. Then I'm going to add all the untracked files to the staging area for the next commit and then I'm going to commit this with the message of init. So in the previous video we covered how to use Terraform to set up one VPS instance, in our case one DigitalOcean droplet. But the truth is if you've only really got one droplet or one VPS to set up then perhaps you don't need Terraform anyway. More likely you want Terraform when you've got a larger infrastructure estate such as what we'll be using in this project. I'm going to go ahead and comment out the output that we added towards the end of the previous video as that really only works for one node and at the end of this video we're going to end up with multiple nodes. So we'll look at how to use the output differently in that case. So the immediate challenge becomes how do we name our nodes, our resources when we have multiple instances of them. And of course Terraform has a built in way of dealing with this. We need to use the count and then we can use that count variable as part of the resource name. For the purposes of demonstration I'm going to use the count of two which will illustrate the point but be aware that in the show notes it does list out the real requirements if you want to put a rancher and Kubernetes cluster into production. In many ways the syntax is a bit like Symfony's twig, it just got the count and the index. Now we have an older docker version requirement as part of using Rancher 2 and Kubernetes and that's the reason why we're going to have to use Ubuntu 16 for all our Rancher nodes. The recommended hardware for running a Rancher 2 and Kubernetes cluster is non-trivial. We're going to go with a 16 gigabyte droplet with 6 vCPUs. If you're not aware that comes to about $80 per node per month and we're going to need about 7 nodes. That said, only 6 of them are going to be crazy priced. You can get away with a $5 droplet for your load balancer. So there's a little bit of copy paste here where we're going to end up creating 3 different groups that each contain 2 different nodes. So we're going to need the etcd nodes which will be our highly available key value store. Kubernetes uses this to store all the configuration, the secrets and important cluster data. We'll need the control plane, which pretty much runs everything else except for etcd, such as the kube API server, the kube scheduler, kube control manager and the cloud control manager. And then our worker nodes group is kind of open to interpretation. I'm just going to go with two nodes just to keep things pretty much in line with what we've got already. But this is where you'd put the more powerful nodes, even though the existing nodes are quite powerful anyway. And this is just a demonstration. But in the real world, you would put the bulk of your efforts here with your workers. And once we've got all that set up in place, which again is pretty much just copy paste, then we need to create an output for each of these different groups. And whilst the syntax will be the same for the load balancer because that's just one node, for all the others where we have a count involved, then we're going to have to wrap all of the values inside the square brackets. And rather than provide an explicit node name, we can use the asterisk instead. And Terraform will intelligently figure out what that value should be for us. Again, there's quite a lot of copy paste here. The nice thing is, is once you've got it working for one, then just getting it working for others is pretty much, as I say, it's just copy paste. So nice and easy one for you. It's worth pointing out at this point that you can also output other things. Most commonly, I find the IP addresses are the most useful things. You can start getting pretty clever with this stuff and use the outputs as inputs to other programs. So for example, we're going to use Ansible later on. And there are ways that you can extract information from Terraform and use them as inputs into Ansible. We're not going to get that involved in this tutorial as I do think it's overkill unless you have a really big infrastructure. But just know that that kind of thing is possible. The only thing that's left at this point is to correct my mistake. I don't want more than one load balancer. And with that change made, just give the config a quick once over before jumping to the terminal where we're going to apply this config. So much like with Nginx, if you've ever used the Nginx-T flag to check your config before you go ahead and reload to ensure that if you're going to put some bad config in there and it would break everything, that that doesn't happen before you actually do it. So the terraform plan command is going to check whether the execution plan for these changes that you've made in your main.tf file match the expectations of what would happen if we ran the apply command. And that's quite nice because we've caught a potential problem earlier than if we tried to apply that plan. So now if we rerun the command, we get a very verbose output of all the things that would happen. Again, there's lots of computed values in here which will only be resolved into real values after we've applied this particular execution plan. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to get prompted to say yes, that we want to go ahead and actually apply this plan. 
And when we do that, it's going to take about 20 to 30 seconds to create all our different droplets. It's not that we take 20 to 30 seconds per droplet. All of these operations happen in parallel. So if we jump into the DigitalOcean dashboard at this point, we can see the progress of all our different nodes getting created, which is quite exciting really, and also quite costly. We get a bunch of output on the terminal, but most importantly, when the apply completes, we get all our different outputs. And the ones that we specified to be groups or with counts will come out in an array style syntax, whereas the load balancer being individual, it won't. And I'm going to go ahead and destroy all this infrastructure straight away because I have to finish recording videos here for the evening and I don't want to leave this running overnight. And it's also interesting to see that the destroy command will take down every piece of infrastructure as well. She's really quite cool. I really like Terraform, especially when you're using it on proper sized infrastructure. This is when it becomes a real time saver.